Ghana. Um, last week, we started a topic on obesity. Um, we actually learned a lot from it. And today, we chose another great topic, which is on nutrition or healthy diet. And we are very privileged to have with us once again, Mrs. Um, Hannah Tusule Asiedu Krang, um, who is a public health nutritionist to um, educate us more on how to eat healthy. Um, this program is sponsored by Heduke Foundation, uh, which is a, an NGO which creates awareness for various health issues that affect the general public. Um, viewers can send your message, uh, your messages through our Facebook page on Great TV, or you can send a text on 075-488-57852. Um, make sure you share and then send your questions as well, and I'll make sure you get your answer before the end of this program. Um, thank you for coming once again, madam. Thank you. And welcome again to Great Time. I want to know, um, we started on uh, obesity and weight loss, and today we're going to continue with how to eat healthy. Uh, most of us um, don't follow our normal diet. We just eat, um, not per se, anyhow. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about um, the health implications after what we eat. Um, I want to know, um, to me, I, um, what I think is uh, eating healthy is the same as nutrition. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you can explain uh, uh, to us the difference between eating healthy and then nutrition, and if they are the same too. Okay. Yeah, you let us know about them. Okay, so hello to our um, viewers once again. Um, healthy eating and nutrition, um, well, one is embedded in the other. So nutrition is the broad um, phenomenon of everything that has to do with food. So um, when we talk about nutrition, we're talking about right from um, you know, where the sources of our food come from, mm -hmm. how they're transported, you know, the whole um, process, the whole value chain where it, the food goes through to get to us, the processing, you know, so right from um, the farming, so mm -hmm. we're planting or whether it's the plant or the, the animals, you know, the rearing of the animals or everything and throughout the whole process, the whole value chain until it gets to your table when you eat that whole um, phenomenon is what we call nutrition. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll be talking about things like food security, etc. Whether there's food available at a certain time of the the year, or um, you know, depending on what season we're in, or which part of the world we are in, or whether we even um, we we can afford to buy the food, food that is yeah. around. So yeah. that's the whole um, phenomenon of nutrition. But healthy eating has to do with um, a, a smaller part. It's like I said, is embedded in the healthy eating is about what you actually put on your plate okay. to eat, how you combine the food groups, and how healthy it is. Okay. So that's it. I hope that makes it clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, some of us are new to this thing. So um, where do we start? <laughs> if you want to follow. Um, the guidelines on healthy eating. Okay. Um, well, we can start from any point. Well, I'll start from here. Well, healthy eating um, basically involves what I just mentioned, what we put on our plate, what we actually eat, what we put together yeah. as a meal, and how much of it is. So we're talking about the portion, mm -hmm. the portion of food we have, and how often, so the number of times, or how many meals we have in a day, um, and yes, so it's the the um, what we put together. So the food groups we put together, um, the portion mm -hmm. of food we have, and then the number of times, the frequency of meals we have. So that okay. um, put together would um, determine how healthy we eat, whether okay. it's healthy or not, or we can make things healthier. Oh, okay, so that's it. So um, what are the food choices? Um, do we have to consider? Okay, mm -hmm. um, so. To eat healthily, um, again, we we would um, expect everyone to have a balance, what we normally say, a balanced okay. diet. Okay. So a balanced diet is one that um, contains the food groups, the main food groups mm -hmm. that would expect um, um, the body to be able to, uh, to uh, obtain the um, nutrients that we need for our bodies to keep well. Okay. So, um, and there are five main groups. So we've got... Um, 
if we've got the protein group, we need you know something from the protein group. Mm -hmm. We need something from the carbohydrates, mm -hmm. um, and then we need fruits and vegetables. Um, so protein, you know, we know what it does. It helps to repair our tissues, and then um, carbohydrates, the main source of energy that our body um, obtains energy from. And then with the fruits and vegetables, we've got the minerals and um, vitamins from there. Um, and then um, also we've got the dairy um, group, that's the milk-based group, and, and, some fats, um, and oils. Again, the body gets some energy from there as well. So these are the main groups that we would expect that our meals would have, will be put together based on these food food groups. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. I'll put it um, there's this thing called calories mm -hmm. when um, someone is going on a diet um do we have to count every calories in like our food groups like yeah whatever we eat okay so um we're talking about calorie counting um it's it's okay there are times when you can calorie count meaning that you know you're watching what you know how many calories you're having a day but i wouldn't advise one to be um obsessed with that you know okay. um if you're um practicing or you know you make it as part of your lifestyle to look mm -hmm. at what goes into Obsessed your your that, meals you know. and what how often you're eating etc and the, your portions and being active then you won't worry so much mm -hmm. about how many calories you're putting in because then you over time you know whether you are within a healthy range or not for um, normal adults um, women usually they say we'll need about 200 to 2,000 um, kilocalories of um, energy mm -hmm. in a day. And for men, it's about 2,500. That's the guide, the guidelines we have. So if constantly you are within that range, then you are safe. If you go beyond it then or under it, you know, over a period of time, then we can talk about all the other issues outside the, the normal range. But yes, there are times when um, it's helpful to calorie count. But I wouldn't advise one to be too stringent on it and become so obsessive about it because okay. then it, it can be a bit pro problematic. But yes, yeah, sometimes, especially now that there are so many campaigns about snacking and how much snack we're having, whether we're having too much, then it's good to look at what we're actually having, yes. Okay. So it is important. It has a place, yes. Okay. And um, we, when we talk about this diet, um, is it different from uh, diets for kids? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between adults' diet and then kids' diet as well? Okay, so um, I don't think there are separate diets for, or or should I ask are you, do you mean the different regimes that people might recommend that, oh, eat this or eat yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, or, for adults and children. You know, yeah. for, okay, so first of all, I want to say that um, to stay healthy in general, mm -hmm. you don't have, diets do not, generally keep you healthy on a okay. long term so if if um, you want to and most of the time you know the issue of diets you know that and there are myriad of them so many different names and I don't want to mention any names here because I don't really intend to promote anyone um, but then what I'll say is that most of them are there or they're put together by individuals to mm -hmm. serve a certain purpose so for example you want to loses some amount of weight mm -hmm. for an occasion for something yeah. you go through a, a, a certain period you know you and most of the time they involve um omitting or leaving out certain nutrients which in the long term is not really useful mm -hmm. because your body needs all the nutrients, nutrients that it needs it's just that a lot of the times people go um, you know use them or take them in, in you know in an unbalanced way and that's where we have all kinds of issues but um, yes yeah, so I wouldn't really advise in the long term it's not sustainable so it's not the best if you keep a healthy practice of just making sure your food has the main um, food groups that we need your your diet is balanced mm -hmm. yeah. you're eating properly you know um, frequently etc staying hydrated then you wouldn't really need to worry about um, you know, all those diets out there. In terms of adults and children, yes, with children and uh, you know, with different, with, you know, right from babies to um, toddlers to teenagers, etc., there are um, slight um, variations in terms of what 
one may want to focus on, for example, um, with toddlers, because mm -hmm. they're growing, you want to make sure that they're having a lot of protein so that their tissues are building, and of course, carbohydrate, because they're getting active, and whether they're you know, um, learning to walk, they're running, etc. so they need a lot of energy. So you might want to make sure that their food has quite a bit of that to sustain them. And then with teenagers, of course, uh, you can talk about um, um, looking at fat, for example, mm -hmm. because at that age, you know, there are a lot of hormonal um, changes going on and, you know, girls tend to be less active than yeah. boys, etc. So we can talk about specifics when it comes to the different age groups, but it doesn't mean, um, but then it, for both children and adults, it's the same food groups that we're meant to put our meals together from. So there's, n you know, there's no, there's nothing um, there's no different. Th there's not a different list of food groups for okay. children and mm -hmm. for adults. adults. It's okay. just that for and even for older people, mm -hmm. there are certain groups of foods that you need to kind of watch and minimize a bit because of you know their age and etc. and the way the metabolic system may be responding. But otherwise, it's the same for everybody. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, most of the time we eat at the wrong time. Um, mm -hmm. I want to know what what is this. Uh, specific time mm -hmm. that we have to eat like let's say breakfast lunch and then um, supper mm -hmm. that is the most important thing most people say we have to eat before 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. or some others say we have to eat before 5 p.m. so what is the correct time okay for us to yeah right so um, for breakfast um, most of the time the, the recommendation is that from the time you wake up um, at least up to about two to three hours after you've woken up, you mm -hmm. should have something to eat. So, so for example, if you, most people wake up at six o'clock in the morning, we expect that, you know, by about half past seven to eight o'clock, about nine, you should have had something, to, um, you know, put in the system, you should have had something to eat. So, you know, roughly, um, you know, that, that range. Lunch time, um, you know, if you've had breakfast around eight o'clock, for example, then Around about midday, definitely your body will be, you know, normal if everything is functional, your body will be um, expecting some food. So just about midday, usually most people have lunch between 12 and about 2 p.m. And then when it comes to the evening meal, um, what I'll say is that as long as you're eating, yes, late night eating can be problematic and that's because um, when you eat quite late, mm -hmm. the tendency for you to go straight to bed after that. So if you're eating at 10 p.m., for example, you won't sit around waiting for anything. So the tendency is that as soon as you finish eating around 10 p.m., you you're going to, to sleep day. because yeah. you're, yeah. you know, the next day you're going on to something yeah. else. So the advice there is to eat um, early enough in the, ev in, the, in the early evening so that you're still awake and active a bit before you retire to bed to give your, your body enough time to use up um, the food that you've eaten, the nutrients that are absorbed, so that you don't have too much being stored as fat. So that's where, that's, that's why that, um, um, that idea comes from. That's okay. where it comes from, the fact that you want to be a bit more active or st be awake mm -hmm. and be doing something so that you can use up what you've eaten other than just going straight into bed. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've also heard about this um, thing called trans fats. Mm -hmm. um, what is this trans fat and what are the food that contains um, okay. trans fat? Yeah. Okay. So trans fat is um, just a group of um, fat, well, fatty acids or fats mm -hmm. that have had um, hydrogen added to them. So it's a chemical process okay. where, so it could be oils, it could be even, you know, an unsaturated oil okay. or a saturated one, which is coming from animal source. And then it goes through a process where hydrogen is introduced into it. And that's what makes it called, um, a trans fat. So it could be a trans saturated fat or a trans, trans unsaturated fat. Mm -hmm. The reason, they, the purpose of it is to make this, the fat or the oil more stable at oh room nice. temperature. So to make, to keep it more solid. So for example, you would have um, the spreads and the margarines and the butters that yeah. we have out there. That you would find that a lot of them would have hydrogen introduced into them. So that makes them, um, um, you know, a group of trans fats, whether unsaturated or saturated. Okay. So that's the difference between a trans fat and then um, one, a normal one, okay. if you like.
um i want to know how much nutrients is too much like in our food if you can how much nutrient is too much yeah um that's 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 a very interesting question mm -hmm. but um for some some groups for some groups of um nutrients um the body has a very efficient mechanism of you know um disposing of extra so okay. for example especially the water soluble one which is the vitamins and then most of the minerals because yeah, they're yeah. water soluble they you know our system is able to um you know discard the excess that the body doesn't need at the time quite um easily but there are others that are a bit more um, difficult to get rid of like our good old fat mm -hmm. um, you know the, and we get the fatty acids from them that's that's how the body uses them so too much of it and that's why you know we, we're always screaming about not having too much oils and fats in our foods because the moment you have too much of it it gets quite tricky getting everything out um, of the system so too much, yes. So for some, I mean, the, the main culprit is um, the oils and the fats and then the carbohydrates as well, because when you have too much, the excess th um, that the body doesn't use, um, the default storage form is, again, fat. So okay. um, we can regulate that by the portions of um, food that we, 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 we eat. Foundation, in partnership with GN Group of Companies, present Charity Fundraising Dinner and Dance. Theme, When Love Takes You In. Date, 21st April, 2018, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Venue, Woodhill School, Woodhill, Woolwich, London, SE18 5JE. Tickets, £30 single and £50 couple. Performing live will be Alapino and the Ozium Man. This program is in aid of underprivileged children with sickle cell disease in Ghana. Um, as we were talking, um, we are discussing about um, healthy eating or what we call nutrition. Uh, we have um, a couple of questions here on our Facebook page and I would like to read it out uh, to our special guest. Um, the first question says, uh, what are some of the nutrients we need to have in our breakfast or lunch or dinner? And that is coming from Royal House Chapel. Yeah. Okay. So um, for every meal that we have, so whether it's breakfast or lunch or supper, dinner, um, the main, I would make use of our Eat Well guide here, the main mm -hmm. groups that we need um, we need to put our food together from uh, the, what, you know, the fruits and vegetables group, the carbohydrate group, um, protein um, group, and then the diary, and then only fat. So the, these five main groups are the groups that we're supposed to put um, our food together with. So for breakfast, depending on what you're having for breakfast, mm -hmm. you know, you try as much as possible to pick from each of these groups and put it together. Um, at least, but most of the time, at least three. Three, if you have some carbohydrates, because, you know, we need energy mm -hmm. and, you know, a start of the day. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to, you know, emission specifics here, maybe some cereal, yeah, you know, um, cooked cereal. Um, um, so whether it's the oats or the rice or, you know, cooked one, oh, it's yeah. preferable to the processed one. Um, and then have some fruit or vegetable somewhere and then have some protein source as well that, you know, um, we've, I think for most people, their breakfast would, would entail at least three of these groups. And then the rest of the day, whether the lunch and the dinner, you would have, um, would try as much as possible to cover all the five groups. Okay. Now, these five groups have been put together um, um, on our Eat Well guide that we have, and I think we're going to talk about yeah, it shortly. Yeah. So we'll go a bit more detail when okay. uh, we'll talk okay. about it, but yes. Okay. Um, there's another question here, um, and it's coming from Vivinash Palace. Um, she says, is it possible to fast with your children? <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know if we can, we can get an answer from that. <laughs> Okay, that's a very tricky question. I'll do my best. 
is it possible to fast with your children? Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering why. <laughs> how old are the children? It <laughs> depends on how old. Because um, a 16-year-old is a child and then a 2-year-old is a child. But then again, um, fasting in itself, I just want to make a quick comment. Fasting in itself mm. is not a bad thing. It's actually good for the body. Okay. Um, um, but it, again, it depends on uh, the frequency okay. and what, you know, how, okay. is, how one is breaking the fast and what you're breaking the fast with. With children, um, usually not so advisable because children are growing and they need all the nutrients. They need to be fed properly. They need to have, you know, very healthy nutrition to mm -hmm. help with their growth. So um, it's probably, but I also appreciate the fact that, you know, based on, um, religious beliefs you know people you know people's faith you know some um, groups you know would have very young children you know abstaining from food for a number of hours in a day um, number of weeks etc so it depends but I think the the fundamental thing I want to say here is that fasting in itself is not a bad thing indeed okay. sometimes you need to give the body a break okay. so yes okay and um, I keep hearing about this um, added sugar and most of the time when you go to the shops, we have these drinks that says no added sugar, but actually when you drink it, it tastes sweet, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. sugar in it. So what is this added sugar okay. that we talk about? Here? Okay, so that brings us to a subject we, call, we would look at um, called label reading. We okay. need to be reading the labels of the, the items, uh, food good. items we are buying, of okay. the, especially off the shelf, the processed ones. Um, so natural sugars occur with, you know, come with fruits and vegetables, Most, okay. mostly in the fruits. They come with, you know, natural sugars occur there. So you have things like fruit, fructose, sucrose, etc., And that's what gives them the, the sweet taste when we, you know, you eat an orange, for example, okay. or a grape. They're naturally occurring sugars. But when you talk about the processed f um, foods, um, in the, you know, for various manufacturers, they, there are a lot of variations that take place in terms of, you know, what the flavor um, or the, the whole chemistry of the food that the, a manufacturer is producing, for example. So mm -hmm. they will say no added sugar, yes. meaning what we, the ordinary person knows as sucrose. But then the sweetening effect that you have there, most of the time comes from what we call sweetness. And these are also chemicals in themselves. They don't necessarily have calories. They don't mm -hmm. add up to the calories, but then they give that sweet, you know, that sweet taste. Also, so that's one option. Then there's also the instance where actually there's what we call hidden sugars. They might not be mentioned on your label, but they're actually there. So it may not be sucrose, but then it may be another form of a, a, um, a complex sugar that's in there that's adding to the flavor, the sweetness of the food. Oh, okay. and, and sometimes those ones may have calorific value, you wouldn't know. So overall, it's adding to the calories you're putting in your system you may okay. not know so um, yes but the main culprits are the sweetness that the manufacturers would use okay. and yeah they also have their own that's a whole subject we can go into okay. later um, yeah. now um, I want us to talk about this um, eat well plate or what we call the eat well guide mm -hmm. um, if you can tell the viewers out there what it is okay. and yeah what, what are the benefits okay so um it used to be called eat well plate in the uk so it's one of the tools that the public health england has put together to guide the population to help us to know um the various food groups and what's what's in them to be able to put together on our plate for example okay. if we're going to eat so, and it's now called, um, so two years ago there was a review um, and it's now called the Eat Well Guide. It's now, um, if we have our cameras focusing a little bit on, but for our viewers, you can um, look on the Public Health England website and um, type Eat Well Guide, Eat Well, as in eating well okay. and the guide, and it will come up for you. Basically, it's just a circle with, um, different lovely colors in there and in different proportions so you've got them in segments basically if we imagine this circle being your plate on your table what it's trying to tell you is the different groups of foods that you need to pick from to put oh, together yeah. in your meal and we're doing this as part of your lifestyle mm -hmm. you would more than more you're more likely to get it more balanced okay. and in the long term 
you know, you'll be eating healthier than just putting together yeah. anything. So the green, a third, if you look at it, the green, there's a green part, which is um, about a third of the whole circle. Okay. And that's the fruits and vegetables group. And so what is saying that a third of what you have in your plate mm -hmm. when you're sitting down to eat should come from the fruits, fruits and, and vegetables and group. Yeah. So we know what, you know, are there. Then the other third is the carbohydrates um, group. So you've got, you know, our potatoes, our bread, our rice, um, and then, the, you know, the other st starchy foods. That's one group. So a third of it, what's on your plate should come from that group. Now, the other third of your plate mm -hmm. is split between proteins diary and oils and fats okay now so you know with just about half of that half of that third um could come from um you know the protein group so you've got the beans the pulses um the eggs the meat and the fish etc so you know you can pick something from there one thing from there and then if it's um a meal that you know has any of the diary groups one of it you know so that's where we've got the milk um, the different milks, the but um, the butters, the, the the butters, the cheeses, and with all that too, um, the advice is to go for the um, ones with less fat, yeah. and then the oil groups. That's a very tiny segment on the of the other third that's left. Very tiny segment. Um, so just a little bit. So when we are cooking or putting our food together, the advice is that we don't need too much of the oils yeah, and fats okay. group, just a little bit. So that's what the Eat Well Guide is about. That whole circle, giving you an idea of the groups you can pick from. So if you're going to put together a meal and you've got rice there, see what else can come, from you know, from the fruits and vegetables. I mean, if you've got um, a sauce, mm -hmm. you know, you've got most people would have tomatoes, would have onions in there, would maybe some mushrooms or some broccoli or something in there so that's covered and then with the protein group as so whether it's fish or your chicken etc that's there so that's the main thing and then we've got some um a group that's outside the circle there um to the left hand so to your left which is um where we have the processed food so you'd have things like the crisps the biscuits all the sauces the chocolates the ice creams all those um foods that taste nicer than yeah, <laughs> yeah, usually yeah. food, <laughs> and those are the ones. That, but they're outside the circle because um, we we are, they acknowledge the fact that we do eat them. Yeah. But the the advice is that we eat them less often, okay. very very you know less often once in a while, and not every day. So it's those in the circle mm -hmm. that we should be considering from every day and every meal. And then up there is our uh, um, fluids, our water, and the advice is to have six to eight glasses of water in a day um, and that would keep us healthy um, and, and and of course um, the traffic light system just to remind us to read our labels for the foods okay. that we buy off the shelf so in a nutshell that's what the eat well guide is about it shows you the five main groups that okay. you pick food um, food groups that you pick from to make up your meal right. in a day okay um, okay talking about water mm -hmm. um, is it healthy to drink in between meals like whilst eating, can mm. you drink and how healthy is it? The, there's nothing wrong with um, drinking water um, whilst eating. Um, indeed, everybody has a different um, way. Also for some people, it can be a bit, um, you know, they need the water to push down the food a bit. So okay. there's nothing okay. wrong with it. Of course, some people just have a habit of not drinking water while they're eating oh, okay. and they do maybe before or after, etc. But there's nothing really wrong with eating or drinking water while you're eating. Except that, of course, if you think, if you don't actually, if you think you're getting thirsty while you're eating, then perhaps what you need to do is drink some water at least half an hour before you eat mm -hmm. so that that thirst is quenched before you eat because the tendency for you for the water to occupy space and then you're not finishing your food and then mm -hmm. within a short time you're going back for the food so that's just that dynamic there it's just um it's just looking at how your body feels and you know how you're feeling but there's actually nothing wrong with drinking if you need to push down something you've eaten there's nothing wrong yeah okay talking about fluid um how many how important is this fluid uh, to our body mm -hmm. and how many liters a day 
Okay. Yeah, if not not just water, but some of us drink a lot of juice. This, okay. Yeah, and stuff as well. So how many do you think is healthy to okay. our body? Lady? First of all, um, fluids are very important. And in fact, water is very, very important um, to our bodies. Um, we need water for digestion. So okay. when we eat, we need water in the system mm -hmm. as part of the digestion process. So it's very, very important. And like the e well guide has um, told us, we've got, we, it's recommended that we have six to eight um, glasses. glasses of fluid in a day. So okay. that includes water and milk and then other drinks and tea, coffee, etc. But um, I would advocate and advise that, um, you know, as much as possible, if we keep that to just water, that's healthier yeah. than all the others. Because if you say six to eight and somebody decides to have five um, glasses of fruit juice and then just one glass of water, what's, ha what's going, what's happening there is that these juices, as we know, have a lot of sugar in them. And that's not, you know, in the long term, that it's not really um, helpful. Um, so I, I, I would advise that we keep that to um, water mostly and then have just a glass of, um, um, actually it, is, it does say that with fruit juice, mm -hmm. we limit it to one glass, that's about 150 mils okay. of that a day. And that's again because of the sugar I just mentioned because most of them, most of these fruit juices have a lot of sugar in them and you don't want to um, have too many. Um, of them. So if somebody's having all juice all day and no water, it's time to make that um, lifestyle change and drink more water than um, your juice. Your body actually needs more of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and one more thing, how is um, this food digested? Like how can we make sure it's the food we eat mm -hmm. like digest well in our body? Okay, well, um, what we can do on our part is that when you're eating, you chew properly. If okay. you chew properly before it goes down, it helps with the, you know, because digestion actually starts from the mouth. Oh, so okay. certain, certain um, foods, um, certain nutrients actually st start getting digested, processed. Uh, digestion is just processing, processing of the food. Okay. It starts from the mouth and then in the stomach and then the various parts of the whole digestive system. So to start with, chew properly before you swallow. And, and like I said earlier on, water is very important mm -hmm. because we need water in the churning process in the stomach. Um, and then of course, generally, if you're, you're in good health, yeah. then your body will be producing the right enzymes that they need. So enzymes are you know, the chemicals that need to work on the food that you've eaten in the system. So your body will be producing the right enzymes you need and the right quantities they're needed in and there won't be much disruption and it would go on. So on our part, it's uh, as much as possible to stay healthy, our digestion <laughs> will go on, um, you know, as it should. Um, but I guess practically it's just um, chew properly, take your time and eat. Back. Um, there's a question here from Royal House Chapel and it says, what advice can we give to young ones, especially girls who have made sweets their main meal? Um, I don't know if we can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Sweets are main meal. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need help. We need to rescue them, SOS. <laughs> um, well, young girls, I, I, I would imagine they're probably teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, during that period I mentioned earlier on, you know, there are different um, periods of life where certain groups need to be focused on a bit. But yes, sweets in general, um, cannot be the main meal that we'll have. We, yeah. You would end up being deficient in something, in the other nutrients if you're not eating properly, if that's all we're eating. If, um, if people or um, young people are having, are tending to be eating more of that and mm -hmm. not eating mm -hmm. properly, yeah. then it needs to be looked at. Is it that they're craving too much of it? What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, are they eating it uh, um, you know, to overcome something or it's just that they don't have any appetite for anything else that needs to be looked at. I would say that if it's become a habit of um, a child, you know, 
um, they need to seek for some help from a health professional. Okay. But sweets in general, you know, we, we can't make it our main meal mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. need too much sugar. Okay. Um, that's not helpful. We need to be eating properly and just having one or two here and there, but not um, constantly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, um, I just want you to wrap up everything. Like if you have any advice to give our viewers out there mm. on how to eat well and then stay healthy. Okay. okay. Um, I would say that we, we need to do our best, our possible best to eat balanced diets. And the fortunate thing is that in the UK here, we've got the Eat Well Guide to help us. If you're not sure how to put together your meal, just Google it, print one, stick it on your fridge or stick it somewhere where you put it on your dining table somewhere, somewhere where you can see it. It will give you an idea of, you know, possible options of what you can pick from and put our meals together okay. as much as possible. Minimize um, the processed foods um, out there um, because, you know, they're not too helpful for us. Um, and then um, eat well, eat more frequently. Um, stay active and keep well. That would be my short <laughs> oh. wrap up. Yeah. Um, we've come to the end of our discussion, and um, I hope we've learned a lot uh, from today's uh, topic. And I hope um, we will uh, make sure we into our eat, uh, eat well guide. Um, we would like to say a big thank you to our special guest, Mrs. Hannah to Sule Asiedu Kran, who is a public um, health nutritionist. And Madam, thank you once again for coming. And we really appreciate it. I would like to thank my sure. executive producer and then my able producer as well. And then um, to Heduke Foundation for sponsoring this um, health talk show. And with Heduke, we always say every life matters. Thank you once again. And then um, next week, same time, uh, we bring you another interesting topic on Yes to Healthy Life. Thank you.